a little typo that needs fixing up but this thing is genetic engineering okay it's always during the uh, recording you realize you've done stuff like this so anyway first off let's have a look at dna fingerprinting and this will be the last stuff we're going to have a look at these uh tricks now this will be the last stuff for today so in case your head's about to explode uh so dna fingerprinting basically variations occur within a species along the length of dna you know this already we all have this individual dna and so what happens is when we cut the dna because we all have different dna the dna is cut into different lengths because we have restriction enzymes recognize these bits and they cut them in different sizes right you good with this idea so if we were to cut my dna with a restriction enzyme and your dna with a restriction enzyme we're going to end up with different fragment lengths because the dna is going to get cut at different spots that sounds pretty cool right um so these variations are generated why why do we all have different dna it's due to this stuff called mutations we're going to be having a look at these in different classes okay but we thought we might uh i'll, I'll show these to you in a second so what these do these mutations is a result in our different restriction fragments um having different lengths okay so let's have a we can sort these out obviously using gel electrophoresis so first off let's have a look at an individual one or a morph one so this person here has the following restriction enzyme cutting sites and literally okay boom boom they're going to have two different lengths of dna whereas another person has this mutation say which say changes this area just here okay so it doesn't get cut at this point the restriction enzyme is now going to cut only in those two other bits and we're going to end up with a fragment of this length so as you can imagine on a gel electrophoresis these two individuals are going to end up looking very very different and an example of this is just here um, so say here we get two different types of DNA they cut up and they're compared here well let's face it here who first off you know you might end up with all these different banding lengths and so an example of this here so say we have the victim here we run their dna well we have evidence okay we found some type of uh skin cell at a at this crime scene well obviously it doesn't first off we compare it to the victim okay so this one and this one's been cut and we've got these two different lengths of dna which we can show up here obviously they don't occur to the victim what they match up with is suspect one dun, dun, dun. this person is the guilty person okay and this is another example of a result of electrophoresis where we could cut up dna for instance um and obviously we have a match between these two people here okay but this is also showing that different people will have different um types of you know, different different uh, sequences of uh, you know, different results of phoresis. This is quite an interesting one to show you one other thing as well. Uh, generally, what we'll also long along, run along here is a standard. And what the standard is where what is known is the particular base lengths already. Okay, so we have particular base lengths that are also run through just so that per the researcher can actually use these as a way of actually telling the different standards what you'll also uh, the different lengths of dna what you'll also obviously notice here is the size fat you know the bigger ones don't travel as far, far far as the shorter ones here okay all good good any questions by all means you, you know that you can send them through so here's another great example here paternity testing two different cases okay we can always separate these up now is this guy the dad okay so we have the child here okay this here is a standard a standard so we're looking at um okay the mother here the child okay is this guy the dad well we'll have to work this out um so the child here has this this these lengths here okay um the mum here she has this length here so possibly it's causing this match type of thing here uh the father here he also has this bit here we have nothing here that accounts for this part here i would suggest that no this guy is not the dad <coughs> okay and now you probably just saw the answer to this one this guy is the dad what makes this guy the dad well the mum here 
First off, let's have a look at the child here. Um, the child has this fragment length here and here. The mum can account for this fragment length here. Uh oh, looks like the dad here accounts for this fragment length here. So if we mix the, the child and the father's things together, what we have is this nice thing, they match along nicely, all parts are accounted for, boom boom, we have a winner, okay, this guy here is the actual father, okay, <coughs> and that's what we can use this uh, gel electrophoresis for, okay, for this DNA fingerprinting, and it is important that you are able to actually read these sort of things, okay, there's a, a whole plethora of them on the internet, okay, uh, and you should be able to go through and start reading off and, you know, start trying to get used to looking at them and saying, okay, so, say we're, we've moved from here to here, which end was positive, okay, well this end was positive, it's positive to move forward, this end would have been the negative end, which would have been the smaller fragment size, okay, this would have been the smaller fragment size, okay, if we're talking about this particular one here, these would have been the bigger sort of ones. Okay, so you should start to be able to do all this different stuff with it. Okay. The next uh, trick we're going to be having a look at is DNA sequencing. Okay, and this has a degree of complexity, um, but it's not too bad. So anyway, DNA sequencing is literally where a technique which is used to determine the nucleotide, the base sequence of the DNA, okay, these A, C, T, G, da, 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 how we get all these letters. Um, and the way this works is pretty cool. This works through the use of these specially modified nucleotides. And literally what these modified nucleotides have is this little stuffing around done to them. Uh, <laughs> I like the, uh, they're called dideoxo nucleotides, but let's face it, let's go the easier version here, because you don't need to remember this word, in fact I'm going to cross it out now, literally what they've done is the, these nucleotides are missing this crucial oxygen atom, now without this oxygen atom, which usually is really really important as they get added on to the growing DNA strands, the next nucleotide can't be added, so this ends also the, the synthesis of DNA uh, synthesis, okay? It's, so it's, it's literally a terminal um, nucleotide. Okay, so to look at how this works, I literally, I think we should just launch straight into a, uh, we should just launch straight into what's used for it, and we'll, we'll have a look at an example of it working. So, the ingredients we use when we use DNA sequencing is we use, first off, we use the DNA sample which is being sequenced here, A, C, T, G, G, T, C, T, A, G. But obviously, in reality, we wouldn't know that if we were sequencing it, so we'll, we'll pretend we don't know it, okay? Um, we also put in normal types of nucleotides, unaltered ones. We're also going to be using primers, as well as this DNA polymerase enzyme, okay? So we put this first off into, say, the thiamine here, which has been that had that oxygen removed from it. Now, what's going to happen is, uh, well, what might go along is a T might get added to this, okay? Not necessarily the altered thiamine is going to be... Um, added here, the C might get added, the A, you know, the, A the C, the C, the A, the C, the, the G, the A, and the T, but this might be the modified thiamine like this one here. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to cease the actual um, copying here, okay? And what might happen is it might go through this entire length, so you're probably going to end up with a lot of entire lengths as well. Um, okay, so, but you're going to do this, you know, have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of copies of this stuff uh, sitting in here, lots and lots of copies of this DNA sample. You're not just going to have one in there, you're going to have thousands sitting in each one of these particular test tubes. And you're going to do this for each one of these guys. Okay, so for cytosine, you're going to put a bunch of, um, you know, altered cytosine as well, as well as altered guanine, altered adenine. Um, now, I hope you get what this means here, okay? So, literally what we could happen is, say, we put it in this altered guanine here, is, okay, so as I go along on my A, C, G, da, 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 okay, a T gets put down. This G here might be the altered one, and it would stop, okay? So I'd end up with this type of thing here. Okay, but say it's not the altered one, say it's one of these guys which is also getting put in here, well, okay, A, C, C, A,